Melan. The missing gap. The missing gap. The missing gap. The missing gap. All right. I'm going to apologize up front, you know? I am very tired. I'm on the verge of collapsing. This festival has taken the hell out of me. You guys like the festival? Yeah. You like the setup? Yeah. Poetry is growing, right? Yeah. Where are the people? Okay. Um, all of you know we've just stepped into 16 days of activism against women and child abuse. My hand is magnetic. Uh, um, so our set today is dedicated to women. Mothers, sisters, daughters, lovers, to all women. We want to keep it nice and mellow. Um, no dramatics. Your cell phone ellipsis. Or was it a prop? <laughs> a blues for my diva. The fathers of our nation have made wives and concubines out of our daughters. With liquid stained breath, they drive lies, big as mines, discarding family lives just to park their success between varsity thighs. A social degree in networking, flash cash to hungry eyes, a gold card can hypnotize, everyone has a prize. The morning after is not important. Labeled daddy's little joy for she born on the seven scales carried the stars in her smile Moved with planets in her stride and seasons would alternate between her eye blinks yet she carried heaven as her pride But it must have been a bad season because she doesn't smile now now she wears fear as a cushion just in case she bumps into those memories still haunting her sleep sleeps with an Labeled daddy's little joy for she born on the seven scales carried the stars in her smile Moved with planets in her stride and seasons would alternate between her eye blinks Yet she carried heaven as her pride But it must have been a bad season Cause she doesn't smile now Now she wears fear as a cushion Just in case she bumps into those memories Still haunting her sleep Rests with an eye open Keeping screams as her guard And a rope attached to reality To pull herself out Just in case she sleeps too deep Hips sway to a careless rhythm For music no longer inspires her And love Love is an empty burden Only carried by fools Who believe in fairy tales And I remember she used to believe in fairy tales. She used to believe in black magic and that witches were the lucky few who had escaped the clutches of life. She used to believe in reincarnation after speaking to the man on the moon. She used to believe in a higher being and that salvation was coming soon. Dreams were her playground and the world her coloring book. She played stones with the gods, hugging freedom as a blanket and she cried only to create endless fountains of youth. She carried wings on her shoulder blades, for she usually flies with time and pain. Pain was only a strange perception in the corners of her mind. And I remember, but does she want to remember? Does she want to remember those endless moments when hell was left to walk the earth? And had she had a choice, she would have easily chosen a grave over birth. That cursed day when the sun did not wake up and the night booked a room in her heart. When flames of hatred painted her pupils red, replacing the stars that usually glow in her eyes. But now, now she has a score to settle with life. She had a deal with fate, but certain things just did not go right. At birth, she was promised that the sun will always shine, but never told that the same sun would scorch her back and 
but never told that the same sun will scorch her back and make And I, I can still hear her screams. Her tears still wet my pillow. That's why at times I drown in my dreams. So I scribble down her pain only to help me find the path. And this is for every woman and child who has suffered the wrath of my brother's hands. This is for every woman and child whose wishing well has run dry who now looks up to a blue and purple sky. This is for every woman who has lost her smile. And this is for every child who has lost her innocence. But most importantly, this is for my father who has lost his inner sense. I spoke to this beautiful masterpiece for about two seconds, and I swear two millennia went by. Seconds were hours, and days were moments, and I swear angels lost their wings when our heart bled and cried. Okay, I won't lie and say me and her run with the wind because the wind is constantly trying to catch up with us. And she, not of this world, her name is written in constellations of stars. The most perfect jazz melody is only her breathing and planets climb down to paint radiance into her aura while she is sleeping. Rolling thunders that scorn and sky as summer sky are only echoes of her screams, echoes of her screams. And she honors the gods to their knees and uses their backs as a stairway to climb into my fantasies. This divine woman, her beauty is not only seen in her smile, but also in her hands. Though she molds life into place, she holds every man's fate on her fingertips, plays rhythms from her hips, and I could live and die seven times, seven lives at a time, from just tasting the sweet nectar on her lips. So when they say that truth is stranger than fiction, I don't believe that. Because I found my true she spirit. We is a beautiful concept. Let's go. Okay. At the verge of insanity, I stand. My head I have detached, displayed, and viewed from all angles, yet still posed confused in the gallery of love. The art in we still fresh with the fragrance of hands, sculptures with feeling. I have honored your mastery and have hung portraits on the walls of memory. An exhibition, the color of peacocks, fine strokes of passion, a splash of nerve, a mahogany frame of trust, and not words in the prime of talent could paint the spectrum of we. And we are artists sketching life and clothed and perfected needles still we scribe. We is a beautiful concept, but we can never work out because you commissioned another artist. Cool. So that was for women, a big up. For MCs to close. The most epic story ever told. I stood in a cipher with God. I stood in a cipher with God and all he seemed to speak about was rotating planets and stars. I stood in a cipher with God and all he seemed to speak about was separating light from the dark, barbecues on the sun and leaving a burning candle on the moon. Thor was his beatbox, and Moses was keeping score on two four-corner stones, and his accomplice was a four-headed shadow which seemed to bump its head in every direction, while the spying rod listened from a distance in anticipation. 
He started talking about me, and I thought he was dissing, but actually he was explaining the philosophy behind me. Because God is a wizard, and I'm his magical bag of tricks, and all he needs to do is think and I spit, and all he needs to do is think and I spit, and we don't need blunts to reach the highest ultimate level of thought, because we smoke life, rolled up in papyrus leaves, blow out smoke rings, and let them hang around certain planets. Then Thor changed the beat. Thor changed the beat and 21 angels joined in. We opened up the cipher so the rest of hell could move in. Flame sparked the cipher from this fiery creature claiming that he was a battle cat. He started dissing but God ignored him. I asked why. He said, nah, nah. I let Gabriel handle that. He called me the first son of man and kept on repeating that the Yamageddon is only a punchline away. The Yamageddon is only a punchline away. But, 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 how could it be? He had promised me that we would cipher into eternity. Then deciding that he was out of my league, he brought Moses into battle me. My eyes opened, but I couldn't see the light or the dust on my boots. I was chained by the neck that was locked to a heavy iron bolt that had thorny roots. The dry darkness smelled the fainty of death. Though beast lord of the shadows took one step towards me, my lips were coated with dust and chapter could taste my own clotted blood. There were shadows everywhere. They move, then stop, shrinking and swelling, disappearing and reappearing, mocking me, taunting me. Damn it! I think I'm having a calling. A soft woman's voice emerged from the corner. stood firmly in front of me. With the soft voice, it mumbled something to me. Do not enslave yourself to your thoughts. Unleash yourself and bow to me. Unleash yourself and bow to me, bow to me, bow now, I bow to no one, I scream. I kneel to Father. I kneel to Father. Clearly, an apple doesn't fall far from its wedded tree. Here stands a seed that was planted in contaminated soil, which is now bearing contorted stems and wilting leaves, no different from all the dying family trees. You, human, you are one of a kind. You are a son of a bastard, a deadbeat father that beat on your mother until you lost your unborn brother to miscarriage. Your father had so much courage, now you are paying for the damage. Your past leaves your sordid thoughts and carnage. Your father was a savage. And you are just a poet and a portrait of forever being debted in the hands of man's bondage. Bow! 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 No, never! I will never bow! I kneel to thee, Father! I kneel! What do you know about thee, Father, human? Undying devotion for his mercy! Devotion? Mercy? Human, you have caused so much commotion in his name. Divided yourself to form racist religions in his name. Your scientific truth is universal, but why is your religious truth not so universal? All Africans are slaves to foreign religions. They have taken spirituality and made it into a drug. It only takes 10% from a slave wage to get high on faith. Fishes and things being extracted from vaginas, and you call that shit miracles? Those are magicians feeding on poor people's ignorance to upgrade their bank statements. They have enslaved your people in his name, lynched tortured people in his name, priests that rape little boys in his name, they accept faggots, dealers, fake killers, and not you in his name, you kill the lady blame in his name, you human, you gave your friend your last 50 rand to go and have the bloody abortion, now she can conceive, and she mumbles something in his name, 
You call his name in vain, human. Bow to me, bow! You are mine, never! My acts are answerable directly to God. Goodness gracious, human! God gave you light, but you kept on hanging on my darkness. Gave you land, but you made it into a graveyard. Gave you a womb to conceive, but you turned it into a tomb. Gave you the sea, but you emptied of its treasure. Now the elite individuals of your society own its wealth. Gave you the weather, but you use it as a weapon for political sanctions. Gave you the body, but you cut off each other's limbs and sell them for peanuts. Oh, humans are nuts. There's no need for God and leashes right upon you. Your apocalyptic thinking is prevailing. And slowly but surely, you're going to wipe yourself off the face of this earth. You failed to be colorblind to create a new loving world. You cage animals and forget that you're the truly wild ones. You shoot to kill your old and stop to wound your young. Your future is slippery as ills. Human, bow! Bow! Uh, how can I bow when I have love and beauty? Love? How dare you speak about love? Love is the purest form of your existence, but like most things you touch with your poisonous hands, love is also dying. You have taken love and made it into an institution with high traditions. How can you love unconditionally when you make love a mental condition? It went from love to lust, like infatuation, partnership, relationships. Why can't you just love? And do you have enough to speak about beauty, fool? When your female species need more makeup to make up their minds, they distort the perception of nature. They're no different from plastic. Whoa! How will the children believe in themselves when their mothers are failing to pick two soul themselves with claws and beast lashes, not to mention the big breast? How do they even breastfeed? They think smelling like shit makes them the shit. They wear high heels till they have deformed feet, separating their asses with four ring strings, spending the endless days of their lives, living the endless episodes of the days of their lives. Some of them have mustard comfort, they just want to sit, come, and fight. See, my eyes are person who battles to eat and buys other people's hair to make it theirs is truly sick. You're making diseases fashionable. Bow! Bow, human! Bow! Never! I'll bow when I run out of happiness. What do you know about happiness? When your happiness is sold in colorful beer bottles, depending on your status, you can get it in capsules or injections. If that doesn't satisfy you, you can get it in flesh in some corner shady flat wearing a short skirt. It used to be females, but nowadays it's a bit of both. Human, bow! Bow to me, you need to bow, human. Ever, human, my man, a human. Listen to me, listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. You are a slave who's paying for a fine that you're not even certain of because life is on you. You're just a poet, a special case who fights so much but always finds himself tra tracing the obvious. You're always furious, but to them you're just ridiculous because you can't teach these people how to grasp the reality. Just pass the mic and stop the bullshit because the rectum of the common man is still being torn by the big dictators and they're swallowing their shortcomings, still bound to get fucked up, then stay the fuck down and feed and feel on what nature gives them. Their ignorance is like an open wound which is infected now, blood septic in order to feel again they need to amputate. They need to amputate. I know it's insult to injury, but I fail to understand why you're trying, human. <sighs> because when the sun sets, you hold on to your stomach whilst this whining, human. Typical poems will forever be made remarkable by the majority. Look at your South Africa. Yeah, it's a rainbow nation, but the rainbow is not black on it. Look at your shoes, she's also jumping boots. Come on! Come on! They lie to you! The oppressor never left, they just had a facelift. Now they disguise themselves as the African national criminals, screwing you without the African national condom. Come on! Your kind will never find peace because you still need a middle finger and a trigger figure to declare that peace. Come on! Look at your sister. Look at your sister. Look at your sister. She can tell a grown man stories that would turn his inside out, force him to cry like a baby. Only nine, she too knows what it feels like to be a woman. Let's just hope it doesn't happen to your beloved daughter. You're rich in skill, but so poor in life. I know, human, it's hard being a poet with an empty pocket. Because even the page sometimes fails to show you the smallest regard for identity. What kills a man begins as an appetite. Are you willing to starve for the truth? Oh. Or bow to me and bear my fruit. Thank you! Treading on a path made from the corpse of man who had fallen victim to the cruelty of cultural norm. 
Frogs that croak lullabies to the lonely hill. A fire awaited our arrival, naked and in a line we stood firm and strong, not certain of what awaited us on that hut. We are humming now, our faces looking down as if we were cursing the ground we stood upon. Cudgels and sticks woofed upon my head, slayers and curses tore me apart. Was it some sort of vengeance? Was it some sort of vengeance? I've done these people nothing wrong, but my face was numb from the slaps and punches. It was the sacred ground walked by few and understood by many. The cramps in my stomach feeded heavily on my fear. Shit, I needed to relieve myself. Shit, I needed to relieve myself. My feet failed me and my tears bailed from my eyes. I was furiously shoved towards him. He fidgeted for my manhood until he had a firm grasp of what was left of it. He looked into my eyes with so much conviction, pulling my foreskin, and in one shot he left me bleeding. The blood dripped from my thigh to the ground. I swallowed my tears, and in a shaking voice, I declared myself a man. I declared myself a man, I declared myself a man, so I could be fit in and be accepted. Thank you.